So last chapter, we read about Dwight getting in the fight with um, Zach Martin. All right. Origami Yoda and the Sweater Vest by Kellen. Uh, I'm going to tell this one into the recorder again. So I've got to tell the story because Tommy wasn't there that day. and Nobody who didn't see the sweater vest could ever describe it. Now, normally, I would never complain about what someone else wears because all I wear are shirts from my $4 t-shirt collection, and some of them are pretty stupid, which is why they only cost $4, but I think they're cool. But this sweater vest was just so outrageously ugly that nobody could not notice it. It must have been knitted by his grandmother or something, because no store would ever sell something like that. Mostly, I remember the puff balls all over it. It was barf green and with a black stripe. But the puff balls were pink. Massive buttons and a big letter D on the front. On the back was an orange reindeer. Can you picture it? This is a perfect example as a reader of needing to picture description. So it was barf green with a black stripe. So I'm picturing dark green and like a black stripe going around it. Then there's puff balls that are pink. So those little like balls are attached to it. Massive buttons. And then a big letter D on the front. Hmm, I wonder who this is. <laughs> oh, and an orange reindeer. Oh, my God. There's only one kid in the whole school that would ever in a million years come to school wearing that sweater vest. And, of course, that kid is Dwight. And when one kid does something stupid, there's got to be somebody to make a huge production out of it. And, of course, that kid is Harvey. Man, what on earth are you wearing? Harvey said way too loud in the library. Clothes, said Dwight. That is the ugliest thing I have ever seen, said Harvey. So what, said Dwight. Should I take it off because you don't like it? Please do, said Harvey. It's making me barf. Seriously, man, I said, this is Kellen now. You really should take it off. I was just trying to help. Maybe I was sort of laughing a tiny bit when I said it. But Dwight stomped off to another table. Harvey never thinks he needs to apologize for anything. But I felt bad enough to go after Dwight. Hey, I'm sorry, dude, I said trying to smooth things over. But you know, that sweater does look a little first gradey. Did your mom make you wear it? Shh, shut up, said Dwight. And he froze and looked straight ahead. Caroline Broom, the broken pencil girl, was walking into the library. Dwight waved at her. Dwight has never waved at anybody before except maybe imaginary squirrels or something. And she waved back. Holy wampa hair. So you do like her, I said. Dwight didn't say anything. And did you wear that sweater vest for her? Dwight's ears turned red. Oh man, Dwight, have you lost your mind? Listen. Why don't you ask Origami Yoda about this stuff first? No, thank you, said Dwight. Could you just shut up? Let me ask him, I said. Origami Yoda, should Dwight... Why don't you just shut up, said Dwight. And he jumped up to grab and grabbed his books, but dropped them in a bunch of pencils. I picked up one of the pencils. It said, Caroline Broom on it and had a little smiley face. I think they all said that. He must have bought them to replace the broken ones. Dwight ripped them out of my hands. Give me that jerk! He yelled. 
There's two kinds of yelling you do at school. There's the kind that to yell, but not all that loud because you really don't want to look silly or get a bunch of teachers in your face. Then there's another yell where you're so mad and you don't care about any of that stuff anymore. When Dwight yelled, jerk, it was the second kind of yell. And everybody in the library looked up and Mrs. Calhoun, the librarian, started coming our way. Dwight was looking to see if Caroline was looking. And of course she was, because everyone was. Great, now you've ruined everything, said Dwight. He stomped out of the library before the librarian got there. So I ended up having to listen to her lecture about how kids seem to think the library is some kind of playground. Then Harvey came over and started making fun of Dwight's sweater vest some more, but I wasn't interested. And I didn't tell Harvey about Caroline and the pencils either. When homeroom started, Dwight wasn't wearing a sweater vest anymore. I passed him a note saying I was really sorry. And he ended up eating lunch with us later and things were sort of back to normal. Harvey's comment. Don't make me out to be a bad guy because I told him his sweater was ugly. I did him a favor. My comment. I'm just glad I wasn't there. So for today's response, you can choose. I give you two responses to choose from. So the first one is, why did Dwight pick a fart, fight with a fart? <laughs> he did not do that. Chapter 13. So why did Dwight pick a fight with Zach Martin? Okay, so I think now we probably know why he did that. Um, if that's the response you choose, here is the frame you can use. I think Dwight picked the fight with Zach because blank. My proof is that blank. This shows blank. And I really want you to make sure you're writing like this. You're using evidence, complete sentences. Some of your responses have been incomplete. The second one you can choose is, or pick one word to describe Harvey. Give examples to prove it. So Harvey keeps having small parts in these chapters. And I feel like there's probably pretty clear, strong traits that describe him. So if you decide to do the Harvey one, here is how you could do it. I think Harvey is blank. For example, blank. Another example is blank. Also, so whichever one you choose, use the prompt to write. And today you're in class. So once you're done writing your um, response here, you start independent reading, whether that's an epic or your physical book, okay? I am with the group, as you can see, and it's very important that you do this read aloud and then transition smoothly into independent reading. All right. Thank you.